Hello everyone, I hope you guys will be fine. Uh, we are discussing wireless sensor network. So today our topic is wireless sensor network routing protocol. Last time we discussed that uh, there are some constraints in wireless sensor network. One of the constraints was energy. Energy consumption is one of the most important factors in designing wireless sensor network which cannot be neglected. <coughs> the required energy for transmission of one kilobyte of data is equal to the to that of processing of thirty hundred thousand instructions. So thirty hundred thousand instructions uh, need the energy to be executed. The energy is equal to the amount of uh, equal to the amount of energy that is used to transmit one kilobyte of data. <coughs> Excuse me. Therefore, to prolong the life of uh, lifetime of wireless sensor networks, energy consumption should be efficient, and the efficiency of uh, energy consumption depends on reducing the number of transmission. So we need uh, a best routing, a um, best path that transfer data from one source to, from source to destination by consuming minimum energy. So optimal routing techniques manage the number of transmissions within networks. Among different, uh, there are different routing algorithms, and we will discuss today. Uh, so let's move to those routing protocols. Uh, we already have gone with the slides. So sensor protocols for information via negotiation, spin, flooding, removal routing, directed diffusion, and gradient based. These are all routing protocols. Are there uh, a few examples of routing protocol that may apply data centric techniques? So all those are data centric techniques. All those routing protocols um, are flat based routing protocols. A source node queries an attribute for the phenomenon rather than an individual sensor nodes. And following are the popular flat uh, routing protocols, uh, flooding spin, directed diffusion, removal routing, gradient based routing. So flooding, flooding, uh, <coughs> in flooding the, the idea is very simple. Uh, the node sends data to all, uh, broadcast actually, broadcast data to all its neighbors and returns the node, the neighbor nodes broadcast them to their own neighbor nodes and this so uh, it floods everywhere it's very simple routing techniques where a sender node simply broadcast packets is directly connected neighbors that will in turn repeat the process by rebroadcasting to all of their own neighbors until all the nodes receive the packet so it's very simple techniques but it has some drawbacks as well so you can see uh, it's, a, it's a very simple uh, one sensor network, uh, network where four nodes uh, are communicating with each other. The node A sends want to send data to node B is what node A will, will do. It will broadcast data to its neighbors, immediate neighbors B and C, and C will broadcast to its immediate neighbor D and we will also send data to D. So at the end D will have duplicate data, will have same copy of the data. So this is one of the drawback that is known as inclusion. So flooding generates a lot of traffic in network. That is the main disadvantage. Flooding have also have some other deficiencies like um, uh, the, the one I told you, inclusions, overlap and resource blindness. So let's move forward. Overlap. So look, uh, this is the node. This is the node B and A. 
the B covered that area and A covered that area. So a sensor load, the sensor has some features you must keep in mind. Number one, the sensor must have some range to which area it can covers, up to which area it can covers, and it it will have uh, the sense. Uh, sensitivity. Sensitivity means how much change in the ambient environment can a sensor detect. So B detects any temperature change in this area. In this area, we will detect. Let's suppose B is a temperature sensor. So it will detect the temperature, any change in the temperature in this area. And the A will also detect temperature in this area. So if this area has some temperature value like 30 degrees centigrade at time T1, when time T1, the temperature of this area was 30 degrees centigrade, B will sense that and send it to C. And A will also send that and send it to C. So the C will have same value of this area. And this is be called overlap. And it is the resource wastage. Sometimes sensor nodes overlap each other with respect to their geographical area. That may also cause in data overlapping during data collection and dissemination means distribution to neighbor nodes. Sending and receiving same data will lead to resource wasting. Overlap problem is difficult to address as compared to inclusion. So, resource blindness. Flooding never considered resource or constraints of individual nodes. Like, uh, for example, we have node b and we have node c and there is node a and there is d and d want to send data uh, a sorry a wants to send data to d a wants data sent to d and a and this c has uh, the, the node C has less energy and node B has high energy. So the A will not consider those things. It will just blindly send data to B and uh, C. So if there was a criteria like you want to consider a node that has uh, a certain level of energy uh, if it has that energy then the communication will will go forward so in that case the a will select b node because b is a higher energy node and then select that so in flooding uh, those things are not considered so we we call it blind, um, resource blindness as each node has limited energy resource that must be consumed efficient, efficiently, but flooding pro protocol doesn't take into account the available energy resource individual uh, nodes. So to counter this, the, the, the efficiency of flat, we have another protocol, a sensor protocol for information via negotiation. This is also a flat uh, routing technique, one of the flat routing techniques. The main objective of SPIN is to overcome the shortcomings of the conventional protocols like flooding. The basic property of this family of protocols are data negotiation and resource adaptation. So, they will not blindly broadcast this. Before broadcasting, it will advertise, it will say, look, I'm, I want to send this data to, to that destination. And then the node will reply back that he is able to take that or not. 
So this is a three step procedure. Data negotiation requires that nodes running spin learn about the content of the data before any data are transmitted between network nodes. To carry out negotiation and data transmission, nodes running spin use three types of messages. First message type is ADV, advertisement, request and data. So you can see A want to send the data. So first it will advertise. First, it, it will advertise, and the B then request that I want to get that data. So, so then A will send the data. If the B didn't respond, that A will not send this data to B. So A sends data to B, and in return, B advertise that data to its neighbors, immediate neighbors. And the immediate neighbors, whatever nodes want, this data will request for that data and will be then the data will be transferred. Spin nodes overcome the inclusion and overlap problem by using negotiation techniques. In this technique, nodes negotiate with their neighbor nodes before sending the data. Similarly, to address the resource blindness problem, each node keep, keeps track of its energy consumption. Spin is combination of different protocols. So there are different types of spin. One is spin PPP, point to point spin, energy conservation, spin broadcast, and spin RL. Spin PVP is best suited for point to point traffic and provides optimized routing solutions when nodes communicate directly without interference from other nodes data transmission in spin pp consists of three steps so this is the basic spin we already discussed spin ec energy conservation so in this uh, in this method uh, with addition that with advertisement they will uh, ask also ask for uh, to to show that how much energy do you have uh, when a want to send data to b it will advertise that a has data and want to send it to some other node via b so the b needs to show that was it interested and another one is that b should show that how much energy this node has so in the, uh, it works with the same way as spin PV but, but with one addition of energy conservation in spin AC nodes only participate in three ways handshake if they have enough energy resource level. So simply two nodes will communicate only if they have enough energy resource and if they have energy resource then they will do the handshake um, procedure. How they no will detect the energy so you know you your mobile uh, also talk to the to the post mobile tower and the mobile tower also see that uh, uh, how much strength of your mobile signal has so if there are two towers and the mobile is in between these two towers so to which tower the mobile will uh, associate uh, this will depends on that uh, which tower is reading uh, which tower to which tower the um, uh, the mobile is closed and if it is closed it means it, it will have greater signal strength all right the next is uh, spin broadcast Spin BC support broadcast transmission where every node in a network will receive the transmitted uh, message. Spin BC adopts the one to many data transmission model where every node hears the uh, whole transmission with, uh, within their range. Spin RL it also broadcasts the traffic and provides a mechanism for detection of packet loss and also address the asymmetric communication. So asymmetric communication means uh, that uh, in wireless access network that if, if a node is in sleep mode so the data 
suppose the central that uh, that sleeping node will not be transmitted but it will pull somewhere and upon awakening awakening on the node the node will then ask that uh, inquire about the data and uh, then the data will be transmitted so this sort of communication in, in wireless access network is known as asymmetric communication different uh, directed diffusion consists of several elements interest interest message data message gradient uh, gradients and reinforcements so in simple directed diffusion uh, there are elements uh, interest propagation gradient setup uh, reinforcement and data delivery so to initiate directed diffusion in interest messages are diffused to diffuse by sync to its neighbors in interest propagation phase and this process is repeated until all sensors receive a copy of interest message the received interest message is stored by each sensor in interest cache. The required data from sensor network is specified in interest message. A node becomes a source if it has data matching interest message. In gradient setup phase, each source establishes a gradient towards sync, back towards sync. It may um, many gradients to be established for the same interest in this case. It is a task of reinforcement phase to reinforce a particular part with best link quality and lowest delay by sending the interest message. Finally, the route between source and the sync is established and the data delivery phase is started. And <coughs> the sensor data reinforce one or small number of uh, these parts. So the next is hierarchical protocols. So in hierarchical routing techniques, nodes are grouped to form the cluster. So in this technique, uh, we don't need uh, that all the nodes should uh, should uh, talk to sync. This is sync. What what they does they collect uh, they made a cluster. Let's suppose this is one cluster and this is the one cluster and they make cluster heads. For example, this is a cluster head. In this cluster and this has this cluster heads. Sorry, let's say. And these can communicate to each other and also to sync. So the main aim of hierarchical routing is to efficiently maintain the energy conversion of sensor nodes by involving them in multi hook communication within a particular cluster. Performing data aggregation and fusion in order to decrease the number of transmitted messages to the sync. So you can see here we have sync and there are clusters. These nodes only communicate with the cluster. They are not allowed to communicate with other nodes. Hierarchical routing techniques also have some design and operational challenges like cluster formation. Like how to make <coughs> sorry, how to form cluster and which node should select as a um, should be selected as a cluster head some of the hierarchical based uh, routing protocols are uh, low energy adaptive clustering hierarchy leech threshold sensitive energy efficient sensor network team power efficiency gathering in sensor information system pegsys adaptive threshold sensitive energy efficient sensor network acting so these are all hierarchical protocol we will only discuss leech as um, according to your syllabus so 
So leech is one of the most popular hierarchical routing algorithm for sensor network. The idea is to form cluster of the sensor nodes based on the received signal strength and use local cluster head as a router to the sink. The main objective of leads are extension of the network lifetime, reduce energy consumption, use of data aggregation to reduce the number of communication messages. So this is a, a leech example. This is cluster head, and this is a cluster, and then we have base station. The main objective now <coughs> we have uh, locations, location based or uh, geographical based. So location based uh, routing protocols, sometimes called geographical routing and is based on the location information. Graphical routing is a useful technique to maximize the number of transmission towards the base station by eliminating redundancy among packets from different sources. And in this, um, there is no need of the routing table. In geographical routing protocol, forward, forwarding decision how to send, forward the message and to which node the packet should be forwarded. These decisions are made using geographical position of the node. All nodes in the network know following three inputs. So these three inputs uh, will be provided to nodes and every node will use these three points to decide that where to send the data. Number one, every node should know their position. Number two, the position of all their neighbors. Every node should know that who is their neighbor. And number three, the location of the final destination. How did how <coughs> how does they know this information? This information is normally is inside the packets. <coughs> Excuse me. All routing decisions are made locally based on internal nodes. So, you know, uh, the decision is made locally. This means the decision is only made by the node based on its neighbors, neither not the entire network. Therefore, very little routing information is kept in each node. Traffic overhead is low, computation times are considerably reduced because no energy is spent on frequent route discovery. Uh, route request and reply messages. Node memory requirements are decreased as there is no need for keeping information about the entire network topology. <coughs> so in location based routing we have the first one is geographic routing, a greedy routing and phase routing. Two packets forwarding approach in geographical routing is greedy routing and phase routing. In the greedy routing algorithm each node in the uh, route forward packet is to the neighbor that is closest to the destination. For example, we have this destination and this, this is the source. The source has those three neighbors. So it will only send data to this node because it is closer to the uh, destination. So it will not send data to these two nodes. It will send this. And in response to this, it has two neighbors. So which one is closer? So I think Y is closer. And Y has three neighbors. One, two, and three. Which one is closer? So this neighbor of Y is closer to this. And here, which one is closer? So here we have um, K is closer. So it will select K to send the data. And then it will reach there. <coughs> All right. Greedy parameter stateless routing is a this is a greedy route another name of greedy routing is a location based routing protocol in which packet forwarding is in or based on node position and and destination. In GPSR nodes obtain the information about its directly connected nodes via hello or beacon message. So how they will, the node will get information of 
its nodes of its neighbor nodes by sending frequently a, a, a short message that is called hello message or beacon message time to time to see that uh, the neighbors are how many neighbors are there and <coughs> how many are active source node marks the sending data with the location of the receiving node and relay a packet to its immediate neighbor that make a locally forwarding decision and handle the data to neighbors that is geographically closer to the destination. Every node from source destination make local forward decision and move data closer to the destination hope by hope until the destination is reached. Phase routing. So this is another simple uh, thing that if this is a source and it want to select one of the neighbor node to send the data so what it does uh, it will this is the destination so let's suppose it will do some clockwise or maybe anti-clockwise but clockwise so whatever edges become possible to select that node and then it has destination this from this it will do clockwise and we'll get that that um, edge and then it will select this and this and then this <coughs> face routing is simple method for routing wireless ad hoc network it only uses location information about nodes to do routing and it provably guarantees message delivery in static connected plan graph. The main idea of the face routing is to advance uh, intersection of faces with a straight line segment that connects the last intersection and the destination D. A packet is routing along the interior of the faces until the edge on the route intersect XD between X and D. So you, you, you find the figure and this D is the destination and we have a straight line here so the best example and simpler one is uh, when you are dealing with this there are two versions after crossing variant and the before crossing variant. This like this is the line. One is that you want to traverse from S A B and and then <coughs> the B and C is crossing this line, intersecting this line. So before this before crossing the line you will if you're following before crossing the line you will do a different path if you want to do after where crossing you will have a different path so i'm going to show you the simple <coughs> so if you want to avoid intersecting edge twice a before crossing variant may be used it is based on some other criteria for example using smaller initial angle direction towards D. So you can see this is the source S and this is the destination D and we have we have this line. Okay. So here we have phase one, phase F1. Phase F1 is then traversed by X S C. So we traverse from S C which is closer in the direction to SD than SA. So you can see uh, if we use this, we'll be closer to D rather than if we if we move to SA. SA is not closer to D. SC is closer to uh, as compared to SA to D. The next phase F2 is selected. So we came here. And this is the F2. 
this is F2. This is phase F2. This is F2. Okay. So the next phase F2 is selected and the reference line is updated. So now the reference line is updated. We have the reference line, not this from F to B. The reference line is now from X1 to D. Now the reference line starts from here. The packet is forwarded from C to H. So, so for the packet is forwarded from C to H because it has two options. Either it has to send its packet to H or it has to send to B. So which one is closer to B? So H is closer to B, so it will send data to H. And from H, it will send data to G. And from G, it has three options. The number one, it, it has to send it to F or J or I, and we are here. The next phase F2 is selected and the reference line is this. The packet is forwarded from C to H and then to G until the H G F intersects the line. The G F the G F it is intersecting the line here. So when it intersects the line X one D at point X four, so it is intersecting the line here. Which line X one D at X four? So the X at X four it is intersecting the line. Similarly, the phase switches to F4. Now, the phase is switches to from F2 to F4. Yeah. The packet is forwarded to G and then to I with edge IF intersection. So here is another intersection. IF it is intersecting this line at x5 finally the packet is will reach and from here finally the packet will reach from here it will obviously will send uh, it has only two paths three paths r q and j so it will send to j j will send to k k will send to d finally it will follow we will have that path and uh, the phase routing we will select a path and then we will have this path so, so guys uh, this was uh, today's lecture if you have any query, please let me know. I will explain it. You can query me, you can email me, or you, you can WhatsApp me. So, thank you for watching the video. Bye.